What is up? Welcome back. Today we got kind of a fun one for you. Uh, something that maybe looks like it's a little difficult, but is actually pretty straight ahead. I do want to make sure that any beginners out there are taken care of and that they don't get lost. So I think what I'd like to do is just take the first maybe four minutes here and do a very brief kind of tool overview. Now, if you're familiar with Photoshop and you know how to get around, you might want to skip to about the five minute mark. If you are new to Photoshop or even feel like you could just use a slight refresher and then just hang out. So we made a new canvas here just to show you real quick. Also got my little reference guide up in the top left. Hopefully it's of some help. So we're going to be using the lasso tool quite a bit today, the polygon lasso tool specifically. We're going to be working in this layers palette over here on the right a lot right as you do in Photoshop. So polygon lasso tool, you hit L on your keyboard or shift L to kind of cycle through the different lasso tools, but we want this one, the little pointy one. And you just click and drag, or not even drag, you just click and then move your mouse where you want, click and move you want, hold down shift if you want to, sh you know, it to kind of lock to a point, you seal your shape up and you have a selection. We want to make a lot of new layers today too. So you either hit the little plus down here on the layers, or you can hit shift command N and hit OK. And that'll also give you a new layer. It's up to you. Both are good ways. And we're going to be filling in these shapes that we make with solid colors. And we do that by selecting a color and then hitting option delete. Option delete will fill your shape in with whatever is in the foreground color. We're going to be using the marquee tool a lot today. So you got a little Rectangle one, if you hit M, hit Shift M, it'll get you a circling one. We got a circling and a square one. Another super important thing to know about selections, if you don't like your selection, you want to add or subtract to your selection, you just, with the lasso tool, hold down Shift, and you can add to your selection, like so, or vice versa. If you hold down Option, you can take away from it. Another thing we're going to do in a lot today is if you hit Command, you see up here in the Layers palette, if I hold command and I click on one of these little windows, it's going to select everything in that layer, whatever the shape of the object or piece of art, whatever you want to call it. If we accidentally filled our square in on the wrong layer that has kind of a big background, we go do this on that, it's just going to select the whole canvas. So if I get command and then click on the little window in the layers, it will select that shape, allowing me to just do just big egregious moves with big brushes and not have to worry about it going outside of the lines. Does all that kind of make some sort of sense? It's relatively straight ahead. Just make a shape, fill the shape, shape the shape, make a new shape, keep it all on different layers, right? Boom. So let's kind of get right in here. Let's make ourselves a new canvas. I'm going to go inches. I'm going to give ourselves a little bit of room to have our reference kind of sitting there. So about 4,000 wide. And just call it 3,000 high. Folder full of reference material I collected off the old uh, internet. And I'm just going to put that above. Kind of above everything there. And I'm going to grab a color from inside here. And just fill that background in with it. Anything blue, it's fine. I know it's going to be kind of a sky type of thing. so. You know, no problem. We're not married to it. Now we're going into uh, this folder here with all the reference images. And I'm going to grab this one and just make it a wee bit bigger. The reason I did that is because I want to use this as kind of a, just a proportional guide. Make a new layer here by clicking down there or shift command N to make a new layer. So I'm going to use the lasso tool and I'm just with the polygon lasso tool, super quick, just getting the very basic, just the kind of the fuselage shaft here, right? I'm not worried about the wings. I just want to get the basic, basic proportions, give myself a, a solid roadmap for just the start, starter shape, right? Uh, if you up a point you just hit delete go back but you use the polygon lasso tool until you kind of get to something that looks about this use the color picker by hitting just i on your keyboard and we're going to pick like kind of a darker gray from the bottom 
And you just go ahead and hit Option and Delete to fill with the foreground color. Boom. Right, we're just going to move these layers around to kind of make it work for us. Keep these reference layers in a folder above them, separated. Scooch that guy down and get him the hell out of our way. And then we've got our little, little gray schlong that's just over here. Cool. All right, so proportionally now we know the approximate length and height of this thing, and that's really all we needed. So now we're gonna hop in the pen tool and we're just gonna kind of tweak the shape of this thing to make it work a little better. So if you've never used the pen tool before, it's pretty much you click and then you pull and it gives you curves. Uh, if you've never really used it that much, it can be a little persnickety, but it's your buddy. If you hit option and then click on the center points here, you'll see it loses that other side point right there. Right, and that just gives you a little more control if how you want to do the curve. So here I'm just clicking and just trying to pull this kind of shape, right, using the very simplistic kind of polygon lasso tool points that we created, right, as, as kind of a map. And you just connect these two points, and you go over here in the paths palette, and you just click these little, these little circle line dot buddies, Give that a little clickerino and it'll create your selection. Now you can go back into your layers and just by hitting command delete and you should be able to fill that in no problem. And now you have something that looks a little cleaner. Now you're going to do the same thing on the front. All right, just using that pen tool. All right, we want to curve into this, so we're going to start back there. Just trying to find a good a good curve now in retrospect I do think actually I got a little bogged down in this one um, sometimes happens as I said the pen tool can be a little persnickety but once you get the kind of the flow of it of pulling it it's actually quite intuitive it just doesn't seem to be working that way for me today <laughs> great job and as much as I would love to sit here and watch me with you beat my head against this pen tool for two minutes i think i'm about to fast forward this shit and go <laughs> so on that layer using the polygon lasso tool, which we're going to be using ad nauseum today, I'm just trying to create this separation, right? You'll see from the top of the drone to the bottom, there's this like a line that's a, it's like a, you know, a light shift. So just by kind of trying to kind of emulate that line, I'm bringing the polygon lasso tool across, picking the part that I think needs to be light, and I'm going to brighten that up and basically copy and paste it. Right, so you pasted that piece, you're gonna hit Command L, right, to get into the levels, making sure that you're on the right layer. And you drag from the from the bottom, you see that output levels, drag that to the right until you get a color you like. Make sure these, you know, you see these got these two pieces, you gotta make sure that they're lined up. Right, so now we've got our little cigar here it has two two tonal values and they're both on separate layers so that we can we can screw with them independently. Uh, definitely want to be naming our layers. We're going to name this one under base, right? Because this is the underneath kind of. We're going to name this one over base, right? Both of these are kind of the base of the illustration. It kind of makes sense. You know, use whatever naming conventions that make sense to you guys. All right, we're going to make another new layer. So you either hit that little plus down there, or you can do shift command N. This is going to be, we're going to do this, the, the right side wing, the main wing. So that's a new layer. It's above. I and mean, just again, with the polygon lasso tool, by hitting L or shift L to cycle through them, we're going to try to just, just kind of add this wing in here, right? So um, start somewhere over here. Right, and it goes up a little angle, and then it kind of comes over here. Give or take, something like this. I'm not stressing it too much, because since we're going to work on its own layer, we can very easily just manipulate this if we want to, but get something 
kind of right. Yeah, something like that. All right, see the, it's the wing. All right, we're just going to fill that in. All right, this is also under base over base. We're going to do this wing in two pieces. We're going to do this dark piece, and then we'll have a lighter piece over top of it. So underneath or under base, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to fill that in. We just, you know, we'll grab a tone here, one of these darker tones. Maybe it's the same one as the under base. And I'll make another new layer. And with the polygon lasso tool, same exact thing. This one is above it. We're just going to see if we can't create the top of this wing. All right, we're not stressing it too much. We got a pretty good idea of where it's supposed to go. Thank you, reference images. You're the best. High five. Probably best to do this with, you know, anything that's curved. You want to probably do it with the pen tool, but we're just fudging it. Ain't nobody got time for that. And we're going to fill this guy in with this lighter tone from the top of this wing. Yeah, that's something over. Yeah, that's about right. Now we're going to name this right wing upper. All right, makes sense. We got four layers. We got two elements. Both are broken into a top and a bottom. And boom. Well, let's, let's make another new layer. This is going to be kind of that back right fin. But first, yeah, I can see that that wing was not quite the right size. I just make it a little bigger. That uh, looks a little closer to the correct proportion. All right, now we do this wing back on that layer we just created. And something like this. Again, we don't have to stress it too much because this is going to be on its own layer. We have do whatever the hell we want to it. And maybe something like that, give or take. We're just gonna fill this in with the dark tone from there. Give it a little scooch. It's a little it's a little wide. Proportion's not quite right. Let's hack a little piece off it right here. With the lasso tool, boom, just hit delete, gets rid of that. Alright, we're just gonna grab that lighter tone and just paint a little. Just a little tonal variation here. It's a very subtle, subtle type of thing. And it kind of kind of works. Yeah, probably. Yep. I'm going to do that on this wing real quick. Just a little tonal variation here. Sorry guys, my shoulder is completely screwed up and we're having a tough go, so please bear with me. All right, so a little tonal variation under that wing. Let's just make another new layer behind all of them. Shift Command N or hit the little plus down in the layers palette. And just make, we're gonna try to do this little back wingy. Backy, backy wingy. Backy finny. All right, so we're just kinda something like that. Sure. And again, quickly, we just grab the darker tone from there, fill it in with that, and then just paint on the edge with a big soft brush, that lighter tone, just a couple of swipes using the side of the brush. You could do it with a mouse, just a ch -ch -ch -ch. very lightly. A lot of times when we're painting here, our brushes are not going to be at 100% opacity. So we're making sure to name our layers. And we're going to make another one, another new layer. This is going to be the rear, kind of that lower fin down there. And again, same exact thing. Polygon lasso tool. Boom. Click your points. Look at your image. Kind of get your reference. Something like this. We're not stressing about it too much because we can always manipulate it. We can always screw with it later. I'm just going to fill that in. Grab a color with these eye, the eyedropper, color picker. Boom. Fill it in, maybe grab a slightly different tone and just throw that in with a big soft brush a little bit, just creating these very subtle tonal blends. Right, and these are just our base. These become the foundation of what we're going to build on. Now we're going to go under the wings here. 
right? We got these two little, it's a very simple sort of triangular on one side shape. And we're just going to, again, polygon lasso tool all day. We're just going to add this little shape in. We're going to pick a tone from right there. Usually I like to go with the middle tone, not the shadow, not the highlight, something that's the middle. We're going to fill that in. We're going to call these under bits. These are yonder bits. It's awkward when people see them, but, you know, make sure we move that. It's got to be in front of everything. And we've got this one shape here. Yeah, it's pretty close. It's not too bad. Do Command T, transform it. If you right click or option click inside the thing on the Command T, you get these other menus. You get distort and you can kind of scooch it all over the place. And we're going to duplicate that. We're going to name these right and left. So the one behind it is on the left, obviously. We just scooch that over. Using the move tool, hit V. Make it a little smaller. And now we've got our two bits and it's easy to kind of select them and cycle between them by just hitting command and selecting on the little window there in the layers palette and then boom. So we're painting in a little bit of a lighter tone that we've selected and just kind of paint with the side of a big soft brush, like 50%, 50% flow, 50% opacity, using the side of the brush to drag it over it a couple times. And we got kind of our core of our plane here, right? We've got all our fins, we got our wings. Let's throw a little something in the background here, give ourselves some situation. Now, if you click on one of the layers, hold the shift, and then click down, you can select multiple layers. I just move them out of the way, move those bad boys down. Right, move that reference shit out of the way. And we're going back here, we're going to make a new layer in front of our background and I'm not even going to name it although I probably should but in this layer I'm just going to get a big ass soft brush and with white uh, sorry not big ass soft brush with a big ass textured brush I am literally just painting in something to make it look like it's not just a flat color right I'm, I'm getting a base I'm going to make another new layer, All right? Shift command N makes a new layer. Grab the lasso tool, just hit L or shift L to cycle through them. And I'm going to just, just kind of select this area in the back. You know, normally if I'm going to create some sort of mountains, you know, or something like if I'm looking at this right image, it's got this kind of mountainy crap in the back. And I like the color of that. I'm just going to select that area on a new layer and I'm just going to paint that in by hitting B. Make sure I've got a color I like, and with a big, big textury whatever brush, I'm just gonna, just kind of scooch that all in. All right, add some other values in here using the color picker, just I. All right, grab that kind of like cooler purpley tone, and we're just making the brush bigger and smaller, right? By hitting the brackets, or what are these parentheses colon things? The right one makes your brush bigger. The left one makes your brush smaller. Very, very useful. And just mixing it up with different kinds of brushes. Just, you know, just kind of experimenting right now. And I'm just kind of add on a new layer. Sometimes it's nice to take one of these big texture brushes, give it one tap. Got to deselect everything, right? Because if you have a selection active, it's going to always transform from that. So you deselect that with Command D. And I go into my layer that just has the one little bit. And I just do some perspective on it, which gives it a nice kind of ground effect, you know, gives you a little bit of depth. I'm just going to merge those down because we just don't care that much. And just boom, and that's Command E. Click on the one above it, Command E, that'll merge your layers down. And we're still, now I, you saw the marquee selection there for a second. I hit Command and I select that window so I can just paint in there right without worrying about going in the sky it's just going to stay on my shape so again grabbing some lighter values and when you think you have it in a good place just uh go to filter blur motion blur and just kind of do a little slider doodle set the distance where you want it a couple hundred is going to work for this type of thing hit okay and i don't love it i think i'd rather see it against the sky so i'm going to transform this whole piece 
do a perspective on it, and just kind of turn this into some faraway ground. Why not after all that work? And we're going to add a little layer mask, boom, right there with the little layer mask icon. We'll get a big soft brush, and with some black, we're just going to fade that top edge. Right, might have gone a little too much, but I think it's okay. I just fade that top right there and turn it more into the ground that fades. Shift select all those, reposition this guy up a little bit. And take the opacity down a little on this uh, texture layer. Kind of had that white texture. All right, now we make a new layer kind of behind all that and with just a big, 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 big soft brush. We're adding kind of a blend of what lighter tones from the bottom, kind of blending up towards the top. And that's like a, a little bit of a hint of like atmosphere. Right, when you look at the horizon, there's kind of like a gradient from a very light blue to a dark blue, and that's clouds and air and yada, 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 yada. So let's get on this over base here. And let's start adding a little bit of value. So I've command clicked and that selected that piece for me, right? Just by hitting command and clicking on it. And now with a big brush that's not too strong, I'm going to use this big texture brush. I'm going to select a lighter tone from my reference image and I'm just going to kind of glaze very lightly. I'm not trying to fill this in. I'm just adding a little bit of texture and a very subtle kind of tonal value change here. All right, grabbing the lighter tone, using the eyedropper tool, hitting I. Now we'll go in with, with the big soft brush and create a little more gradient, right? The actual blending is always nice to use a soft brush. Just like that, that glazing of the texture brush to give it a little bit of tooth. All right, so here we are with this soft round brush. And we're just kind of in that over base layer, just adding in some of the lighter areas. And it's hidden, right? I still have the selection active. I just hit Command H to hide it because this shit is distracting. Now we're going to do a similar thing on this rear wing. Right, actually, I've noticed that the bottom of it comes down. It's not quite right, so we're going to just add a little more. Great thing about every everything on layers. Just click on that layer, get my lasso tool. Boom, boom, boom. Click, click, click. Fill that shit in. And or paint that ish in. Get it. And there you go. High five, everybody. So we're going to kind of go around and do this same kind of process to other, other parts. Sorry about my peas, they're popping very... So same thing with the under bits, I'm just adding the shadow in. Big texture brush, grabbing a dark tone and just moving diagonally, boom. Just getting that, I don't know why, I know you guys can see this weird artifacting thing, something exported weird. Right, same thing, the one behind it, making sure that we're on the right layer when we've selected, right? So we've selected that back one, we're adding that shadow in here behind it, and that creates a little bit of depth. Making a new layer on the over base, and if you hit option and kind of hold your brush on the in between them, you'll see you get that little arrow, and that means that that layer will only take effect on the layer below it. Right, so anything I paint on this top layer will only be affecting that layer below it. So I can just kind of just go willy-nilly with big brush strokes and not have to sweat it. So I pick a darker value and I'm just painting in some more shadow. And sometimes it's nice to paint in and then erase a little bit and then maybe add back in until you get something that kind of feels okay. A lot of times it doesn't even look good until you kind of erase some of the edges on it, kind of blend it in and make it look a little more natural here. We add some in. We take some away, and we add a little more back in. And this artifacting thing is getting really trippy. I think it, wow, it's actually kind of awesome. I like that watercolor vibe. Let me know if you guys dig that. All right, but now we've got the, the under base selected, We're adding a little more tones in there. We've selected a slightly 
a lighter tone to give that a little bit of a shift, right? Because it just doesn't need to be a flat color. So same on this under base, we're just kind of going in here and now we're adding a little bit darker. Uh, we're at this point already where we can start to kind of add in some small details. You guys liking this good, insane watercolor effect I've got going on here? Wow. All right, anyway, I made a new layer above everything and this is gonna be some smaller, smaller details. All right, so just using the, the lasso tool. It's painting in the dark value. Same thing on this side. Try to find a shape that kind of works and just kind of paint in the dark value. There you go. Now we're gonna just add some other small details on this little little dark deeps layer here. Just add this little buddy in over here. You know, little bits and bobs, nothing too crazy. Damn, that is getting really trippy. I'm a little concerned it's getting worse. Shit, can you guys even watch this? Do I need to start over right now? All right, all right, so now we're just fixing this. I don't know if you guys even noticed this in here. I just go on that layer and just add a little more in there to kind of get that to line up. And I'm just doing some little levels moves, darkening that wing up, and you can see it's starting to actually kind of look like something here. Right, adding in on the same layer, some little more details. And you can really go in on this. And I'm command clicking on all these layers, right? I command and click on a window, then hit hold shift and click on all those windows that were part of it. And I've actually got the entire kind of shape of the drone selected. So I don't have to worry about going outside the lines. And I'm just painting in some little bits, little tones, little details. Right, I'm adding these shadows on the actual layer itself uh, at this point because I have faith that uh, it's a small move and it's not going to come back to haunt me too bad. All right, a little more. Little black little little doodlers over here. And there's tons of this stuff. If you really zoom in, you can see there's tons of fine details. And you can really spend a lot of time just adding all those little those little accents that kind of just make make the thing look real and just have a good time with that you know you can always select a layer Yeah, I'm so sorry about all this trippiness. Yeah, good job. Still learning Adobe Premiere, so maybe this is something I'll have to troubleshoot. This is the first time, hopefully the last time. All right, making a new layer here. We gotta put these little nuggets under the wings. So this is the little launcher sleds. Right, I'm just gonna make a tiny little rectangle with the marquee tool. Just fill that in on its own layer with black. Use the polygon lasso tool and just kind of screw around, add a little bit here. Add another little rectangular bit, fill it in with black. Use it back to the polygon lasso tool. Make a little nugget, fill it in with black. Make a little nugget. And I will stop singing immediately. So boom, boom, boom. It's just some shapes, something that seems feasible. We're not overthinking it too, 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 too much. Right? It just has to communicate what it is. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, the Sistine Chapel here. It's a drone. All right, so something like that. 
and we're going to duplicate this guy once we got him feeling like he's the right size. Duplicate him by either hitting Command J or Option dragging. We put this one in the back. Because right, it would be behind. And you get a little something, something, something like that. So now we made a new layer above everything else. So this is like the opposite of the little dark deeds. This is highlights. Now you don't want to overthink it. You just kind of want to have a little fun with it. So we pick a lighter value with a not too strong a brush. We're just adding in little bits of just little kind of highlight. It's a highlight, but it's really just a really a lighter tone, right? We're just trying to give this thing just a wee bit more depth. So I keep adding these kind of lighter values in and have fun, build them up. Like it's not one stroke, at least not at this point, right? So we're adding this like a little subtle kind of horizontal type of thing. Very chill, maybe on the top there's a little, we got that little piece by the wing right there, right? Where the kind of light, the change in the contour of the thing. So the light's gonna hit it differently. So we got that little highlight right there. It kind of does a lot. At this point, you've you've got your blueprint. You can, uh, you can just kind of flow with it. And we're back on the highlights and deets layer. And we're just going to, you know, with a light brush, if you just click on one part, hold down shift and click on your next point, it will kind of go straight, right? So if I just go outside the wing and then right there, you saw on that back fin, shift, click, it will give you a straight line. Yeah, a straight line can be a great line. And just adding a little more in over here. Same thing on these little under nuggets, right? Select them, make sure you're on that layer and just... Grab a tone with a big soft brush using the side of it. <clears throat> We're just painting just a little bit lighter tone, right? It's just a couple swipes. The brush isn't at 100%, so it's like a light little glazing. We do the same exact thing on the one behind it. Right, maybe the better way to do that would have been to, you know, do it all in one and then duplicate that, but it's really only two moves and it's totally fine. Maybe now let's have just a wee bit of fun. Let's look for something to put on our drone. What should it be? I know. Let's get a little glimpse into the future here. Let's uh, drag some of these into our file. All right, this one looks good too. Right, set it to multiply, drops the white out, and the orange, the orange smile doesn't work, so I'm gonna magic wand that white area, do select similar, right, delete all that. It's a pretty down and dirty way to do it, but it's fine. All right, so now we've got this little Amazon logo on here. See how that looks. Let's see, chuck this on the back, set it to multiply. Where do you go? You go. There you go there. You go on the wing. A little, there's nothing like a little branding to just bring things to life. All right, so now we've got our little Amazon logo in here. I'm gonna Command T for transform. I'm gonna right click, go to distort, drag it over. Then we're gonna go to warp and we're just gonna give it just a little bit of curvature, right? So we can at least pretend that this is on there. And that kind of does a lot, right? Don't go too crazy. Right, and then if we double click on the side of the layer, we get our blending blending window here. This is our buddy. If we hold down option and click on those little sliders down there, I know it went by so fast, but you're gonna be seeing it a lot. We're able to kind of really get this thing to look like it's sitting on there. I know you didn't really see much move, but trust me, if we were to move this around to an area that has like heavy dark to light value changes, you would notice that it does appear to be more, you know, blah, 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 blah. I need a big smile. Give me that big Amazon smile. Yep, there you go. I don't know, but KB, 
big ass Amazon smile. Gonna just magic wand that orange. All right, let's get that in an orange. Now let's see where we want this to go because Amazon drones that are sending you your packages, they are a smiling. All right, just real quick at the blending modes in here, you'll see it a little more. So I hit option and I drag that black one and it kind of splits them. And you can see it kind of looks a little more like, you know, if it was on there, it, it looks like it's kind of on there. All right, just finding that right spot. Smile. Good to name your layers. I just added a layer mask. All right, so it doesn't go outside the lines. Now, something like that. That's not quite right. Let's see if we can't get that to work a little better. Just skew the poop out of it. Skew the poop. Right now, it's just kind of, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's better. And boom, we've got our smiling branded Amazon drone Arenio. Yeah, looking for the right place for that smile. Any place good for a smile. Yeah, again, sorry about that. Every time I move the canvas, it seems like I get that trippy watercolor effect. Yeah, really sorry. Uh, you can still tell what I'm doing. If it's really off-putting, you know, let me know in the comments below. I'm just going to draw three little, three little straight little white lines here. By holding down shift, I get those little straight lines. I'm going to take that and just kind of move it to the top here and make it look like it's kind of sitting there. Erase a little bit of those. You hit E for eraser and it's not working. You might be on the wrong eraser tool like I just was here. You can hit shift E or just hold down the menu there on the toolbar and it'll you know get you to the regular one. But you erase a little bit and it kind of blends it in. Like I said before, sometimes you make a big mark. And then you race a little bit out, and it just really looks a lot better. Damn, that looks kind of cool, man. I'm not even mad at it anymore. It's just f***ing awesome. All right, now there's like a little camera, right? The bottom of the drone has like a little camera, right? Because there's no one driving El Drono. Well, someone's driving. He's just in a, in a trailer somewhere. All right, so with the marquee tool, circular marquee tool, we just make a circle on its own layer. Yeah, I mean, who's really to say, but I, I think it, you want it far enough forward that the nose wouldn't obscure the view, and then I'm going to chop the top off it, piece out, top of circle, and I just rotate the canvas to make my life a little easier, right? It's easier to pull down. I'm a lefty, so this kind of angle works better for my hand, not that you can tell here. But I'm going to use a polygon lasso tool, and you see there's kind of that top part where it mounts in. We're just going to, on the same layer, just going to kind of emulate that little shape right there. Use your color picker. We're going to grab the middle tone. Just going to paint that, fill that shape right there. Grab that lighter tone and with a big, soft, round brush. All right, using the side of it, just... With that selection there, Command H to hide it, just kind of pop that right in there. And a little gradient Arenio. All right, and there's a little black there. I just kind of added in a little bit of that with a tiny little brush. So a little circular marquee tool, add that in, fill that in on the same layer. We get something that kind of, you know, is in that world of, it's wider. All right, so we're actually going to make a new layer above the camera base this time. We're going to add that kind of black lens in, just freehand drawing that with the regular lasso tool, the freehand lasso tool, whatever you want to call it, the squiggle guy. And wait till we get a shape that we like. All right, so we got that shape. That's okay. We're just going to fill that in with like some black. Command select on that window for the actual underbase, and then I hold down option, and with the rectangular marquee tool, I deselect that area. And we're just going to fill in some of these lighter tones on this kind of uh, circular part here. 
All right, so using the color picker, we pick it, and we're just kind of building it up. But add in some of the darker tones. All right. Then we add in some of these little highlights. And this whole time that we still have that kind of selection active. You're just not visible. Yeah. All right. Keeping it moving. Right, that shape of that in there kind of fits in there. It's a little better. Now we can just add these highlights in. Just build it up a little bit. Just throw like a tiny little bit on that lens, even though it's so subtle. And adding in some little details. And add a little more. A little under here to kind of highlight and indicate that shape a little bit. I'm just going to throw an adjustment layer on here, a little curves adjustment layer. Darken this up a little bit. I'm going to throw a little gradient on the layer mask portion of this piece right here. Just to blend it. A little darker. Just kind of the ground to create a little bit of a, a value shift. Now just make another new layer above everything and we're just going to grab like a big orange. <laughs> a big orange. We're going to grab kind of like a Kind of a pretty warm orangey color, and with a giant brush, we're just gonna we're just gonna literally paint over a lot of this, just from the left to the right, create a little bit of a blend, right? A little more orange on the left than the right, and then we're gonna set it in the color modes in the layers palette to color, and then we're gonna take the opacity down, just slide it down, I take it down, whatever feels comfortable. Season to taste, as I like to say. Right, so this orange and this curve together, they do a little bit, right? It gives us all of a sudden now, like, I don't know, maybe it's like kind of morning time. So well, let's make another loo layer, another loo layer, right? All the way down towards the bottom, right? We're going to add some clouds in here. So I'm not sure what kind of brushes you got. I got this big ass cloud brush. And I'm just going to grab a white and just start painting in. Painting in some kind of clouds here. Right, I'm using very light brush pressure, at least with the physical pen. And just adding in, you know, they're up towards the top, they're going to be bigger. Down towards the bottom, they're going to be smaller, right, because they're farther away. Man, that looks so trippy. I really hope it's okay if I put this out like this. Well, we're just building the clouds up. You don't have to go too crazy because we've already got a little bit of texture that we laid down in the back. You know, it's fine. You can do as much or as little as you feel comfortable with. Sometimes this can be the most fun part. The clouds with cloud brushes or even just building up with just a big soft brush is super fun. All right, so just painting in a little more. So we made another new layer behind this cloud one. We're just adding a little, a little bit of blue in the top here. Alright, so now we're going to add some accoutrement to our drone. We'll make a new layer above pretty much everything. And we're going to try to do some half ass graffiti. I'm not a graffiti artist, so I'm, I'm doing my best. Please. Alright, B, E. Z. Right, 
Right, it sucks, I know, but it doesn't matter, it's gonna be small. There's some squiggle crap. All right, I'll make another new layer here. That one's done. Name this whatever you want. Uh, just another, maybe try a slightly different brush, a little smaller. We just need stuff to put on there. I would just kind of, and it's Amazon. I would definitely want to want to graffiti the crap out of their drone. It just feels right. With a different little different brush, big soft brush, another half as attempt. Take some graffiti here. I don't like a little spray can action. Something like this. All right, there's something. I guess it's got a little drips on there. Really, really trying to sell it. <laughs> really trying to sell it. Well, we got like these little nuggets. Let's do one more. ASAP. Right? Prime now. Prime now. Right, just some kind of textural bullshit. It doesn't have to be the greatest thing. Right, I mean, I guess you could probably also look for stock photo stuff. So now we just a little transform. What the f right click, do a little warp, and just see if you can't get that guy to look like it's kind of contouring with the curve of the bulbous, definitely not a penis drone. All right, that's fine. Now double click on the side and the layers. We get our blending menus here. Blending, blending, blending. Option click on these sliders and just. It looks a little better, right? It kind of lets the highlight come through. You know, by highlight, I just mean kind of lighter tone. I would make sure to do these kind of on everything that we put on there. I'll grab another one. Where are you going to go? Had some drips. Really selling it. Really trying to sell it there, pal. Great job. Okay, Rocket Man. It's the Bezos. I put this other one on here. I don't know where. It kind of blends it in. And your buddy Opacity, gonna do a lot of good work for you, for the people. Well, move it around, see where it feels good. I don't wind up just making all these so damn small. Right back into these kind of blending adjuster here, which is your buddy. Right, you can tell one of those has it active because it'll have that kind of like two squares in the layer. We'll do another one, made another new layer. B to the E. So B3, <laughs> B3Z05. Make it tiny, make it basically into a rectangle. All that work for nothing. High five. Let's stick this somewhere. A little blue is nice, actually. We got this orange and stuff. And everything winds up in the back. That's like a little rainbow. Right, actually using the type tool in Photoshop, which I is has been problematic for me. It used to crash a lot, but we're just going to kind of type in that B3. Little dude, we're going to put it on the back of the tail like this is an actual... You know, plain identification number. So Command T, transform, we'll distort it. And same thing, blending modes on that. Double click on the side of the layer and just option dragging those little doodles. Yeah, this is a big, it's a big help, man. Big, big help. 
I grabbed all the layers that make this drone, did Command G to group them, flattened that duplicated group with Command E, and it gave me basically, you'll see this group one copy layer is just the plane by itself. It's all the elements of the plane. Then I duplicated that with Command J again. And the one that's underneath, I applied a motion blur to. So you just group everything, flatten it, duplicate it, and motion blur the one behind it. And now the one, the layer that's in the front, right, the flattened layer, I'm using the smudge tool. And I'm just smudging a couple of little pieces of it where it's like just a little too kind of crisp. If there's a big edge that's kind of blocking you from coming in, you want to kind of soften that, right? So in the front of the drone, I kind of softened it a little bit to kind of let your eye kind of move through that a little bit easier. And that was it. That was the whole tutorial. I was prepared to walk away at that point. And I did. I walked my ass right outside where I saw these beautiful babies literally right outside my front door. So boom, brought them in here at the Photoshop and very, very quickly, basically did the same thing that we did with the other graffiti tags. The only difference here is that we need to kind of drop these dark colors out. So what we do is we go in here and into the blending modes uh, in the layers palette, and we're going to set anything that with a dark background we want to drop out to screen when vice versa if we wanted to drop white out we would set that to multiply and then we with the levels we try to just really push those blacks down so that it you know disappears and then we just try to find a good place for it and we wound up somewhere around here you guys have a great day be safe out there